There's another way to add tables to an R Markdown document. Specifically, you can create tables directly in Markdown using something known as extended syntax, which more details can be found here. I don't typically create Markdown tables directly in R Markdown documents unless the tables are quite small with very few rows and columns, and also if the rows or values in the table require very specific formatting like bolding or italicizing or something like that. The basic structure of a markdown table is quite simple. The first two rows of your markdown table are going to provide the table's header, which includes both the column names and potentially the column alignment. And the remaining rows are going to provide the rest of the table's data. Let's look at some of the additional details. So the pipe, which is the vertical line here, is used to separate the table columns and column names in the first row. In the second row of the markdown table, you're going to use the pipe and then three or more hyphens between the pipes to create a line between the column names and the values in the table. And within that second row, you can actually specify the alignment of the columns. So specifically, if you have a colon to the left of the three hyphens, that will produce a left aligned column. A colon to the right of the hyphens is going to produce a right aligned column. And if you put co colons around the hyphens, it's going to produce a center aligned column. When you're creating the markdown table directly, it can sometimes be useful to use more than three hyphens or to use spaces to align the columns visually, uh, like what we see here. Uh, if we only use the three hyphens here, then this column in particular wouldn't line up with the other columns, even though it would re be rendered the exact same way. Once you have specified the header rows, you can specify the remaining values in your table by placing them between pipes, and you can format those values similar to other text in an R Markdown document, and make sure that you begin each row and end each row with a pipe. So we want to make sure to we, that we end with these vertical bars. As a simple example, uh, what I did in this particular document was I literally copied and pasted this text uh, below down here and then render the document. And if we do that, then we see the table below. And you can see I have the first row here. So I have the, the different pipes separating the different column names. In the second row, I have my pipes once again to separate the columns, but then I have the hyphens to indicate that I, I'm completing my header row. Notice that in each of the columns, I have placed a colon in the spot to indicate alignment. So in the first column, I've indicated a left alignment. So you can see that all of the values have a left alignment here. In the second column, I have put a colon to the right of the hyphens. So I want a right aligned column. And we can see that the values in the column are aligned to the right. And then in this last column, I put colons around the hyphens, which indicates that I want a center aligned column. And so I can see that the values in this column are now center aligned. Just for fun, I decided to add a little bit more formatting to this table after the fact. So notice that I've added stars around 1.5, which when rendered is going to italicize the text at that in that cell. I have placed double stars around 2.7, which means that 2.7 is going to be shown in bold when rendered. I have had put double tildes around 0 0.6, which means we're going to strike through 0 0.6 when it's rendered in the cell. And you can add LaTeX commands as well. So here I have written slash beta underscore one to render beta one when the table is actually rendered in the R Markdown document. So you can really do a lot with these in these Markdown tables, but I once again want to emphasize that you probably don't want to do this unless you have a relatively simple table that you want to render.